Welcome to the first episode of the Internet Journal Club. I'm really excited to be doing this. The Internet Journal Club is a series where we deep dive into different research articles on topics related to new media, digital culture, technology, design, etc. Basically just things I find interesting as a creative person online. I've been doing short form content for a while now, so I'm pretty excited to dip my toes into long form. Sometimes it feels weird to have to do all these backflips for the algorithm and have a hook and a call to action and all that, so... I think this is cool. And I think the sharing screen format is pretty fun. It reminds me of when I was a kid and I would just hang out with my friends in the computer room for hours, scrolling, going down rabbit holes. I was debating making this into a podcast, but I don't know. We have enough loud white guys doing podcasts, right? I'm also just generally not a podcast person, so I don't even know how that would work. Let me know what you think. Today, we're going to be talking about digital plastic. This really all comes from one article. Let's move me over here. Gen AI as Digital Plastic by Roe, Furs, and Perkins. I've linked this in the description if you want to read it before we get started, but you don't need to. I'll explain everything as we go. So I've structured our chat into these three topics. One, what is digital plastic? Two, the power of metaphors. And three, where to go next. So let's get started. So what is digital plastic? Well, it's a term that was coined by Leon Furs, the second author here, and he's mentioned it on his blog a couple times, which we're going to look at in a little bit, but it's defined here in the paper too. So it's a metaphor for generative AI content. And like its physical counterpart, it's synthetic, ubiquitous, helpful, and potentially toxic. I want to talk about what we know about AI and what we know about plastics and see how this holds up. So interestingly, since the 1930s, the attitudes toward plastics have been positive and negative. Because plastic is known for its infinite transformation, we can kind of take this and apply it to Gen AI. So first I want to show you this quote in Leon's blog. So this is a quote from these authors who were quoting this author. Um, it reminds me of that one office meme. Um, so Roland Barthes was in two minds about plastic. On the one hand, he called plastic a miraculous substance and a spectacle to be deciphered, which hardly exists as a substance. On the other hand, he called it graceless and destroyed all the pleasure, the sweetness, the humanity of touch. So apparently he was also a closet poet because that's beautiful. So the positive and negative attitudes are kind of comparable. What about the actual qualities of uh, the materials. Well, similar to physical plastic, AI is malleable and versatile. The authors point out that it's relatively low cost at the point of use, which is a good distinction. And there's a lot of both of it, an excessive amount where it feels like everything we touch is plastic. They do talk about a potential pro of digital plastic in that it can make essential goods accessible to under-resourced communities. Here they talk about how academics from the global south can have capabilities without expensive language services or access to western networks. But just like physical plastics, it's a double edged sword, right? Many countries face issues with plastic waste, and uh, the same may be true for digital plastic. And with all of these new AI models that are coming out all the time, it also raises the question about whether or not everyone will have access to the same quality of tools. So this is an important point here. Just like physical plastics, we run the risk of creating new forms of digital inequality, even if it addresses others. And the authors go on to describe other examples of how this metaphor holds up, but I think it's pretty intuitive, right? Like plastic, AI is cheap to produce, infinitely recombinable, and annoyingly persistent. So I think it's a pretty good metaphor. Now I want to talk about why that is. What's the point of having a metaphor for AI? And the reason is something called the conceptual metaphor theory. Now metaphors are really important. It's not just a technique to make language more engaging. It's a tool that actually structures the way that we understand the world. When something is really complex and abstract, a metaphor is how we understand it. So take the term echo chamber for example. Let's find a good picture here. It's literally a room where the echoes just infinitely bounce off the walls. But we use the term to describe what happens when something is in a closed system that's insulated from everything else than what's bouncing around in the room. So when someone only surrounds themselves with people who agree with them, we might say that they're in an echo chamber. It's an abstract idea, so the metaphor of an echo chamber helps us understand it. And AI is, of course, a really complex and abstract thing, partly because of what people call multiliteracies. It's talked about here. Right here. So this term appeared in the 90s to describe the increasing complexity of communication, especially when it comes to digital technology. It really emphasizes the importance of multiple modes of communication, right? Linguistic, visual, audio, memes, the list goes on. The reason that this is important is because the meaning doesn't just come from the content itself. It comes from the context that surrounds it. That depends on the culture, the tools to produce the content, and how the content is distributed. So for example, I think about that trend of imagine trying to explain this to a Victorian child. Imagine explaining to a Victorian Victorian child that you're putting gibbets on your Laboo's Crocs. You know? Or what else you got? What a Dubai chocolate strawberry cup with the Laboo in it is. <laughs> 
What'd you say? We are master debaters. Yeah, debaters. No, we're master debaters. Yeah. I'm getting distracted. You get my point. And when we introduce synthetic media like AI, it messes with our ability to make meaning because all of the stages of meaning making kind of happen at the same time. It's fast, it's recycling the same materials, so you kind of get an echo chamber, and we don't really know how to interpret it. Going back to Leon's blog here, he has a post dedicated to the semiotics of synthetic media. And these are some of the implications that he highlighted, right? Algorithms as authors, what data is used for training? Multimodality, how does the meaning change for AI text versus as AI images, technological context, the capabilities and limitations of AI, power dynamics, who has access and ownership to AI, and constraints and affordances. The point here is that meaning making, especially when it comes to AI, is complicated, and metaphors are one way that we can really help break it down and understand it better. So where to next? Well, the authors also talk about critical artificial intelligence literacy. That's the ability to understand, appraise, and evaluate synthetic AI-produced text and media. Now, it's a growing field, of course, but it's going to be more important than ever that we teach people, especially young people, how to navigate and interpret meaning from synthetic AI media. And so he makes this great point on the blog here. Multiliteracies as a starting point could remind us that every mode, every platform, every algorithm is a design social act. So in critical AI literacy, critical is the key word, right? It's not just about the outputs. It's not just about being able to look at a Studio Ghibli generated image and know that it's AI, because that's also getting like more complicated and not that obvious. Side note, I love this account, insane Facebook AI. I slop. Like, yeah. But jokes aside, Vogue just used AI models in their recent publication, and it's getting harder to be able to tell what's AI and what's real. Beyond that, it's about critically analyzing the production itself. This means going further to interrogate the design of AI systems, right? Who benefits? Who's missing from the conversation? And what do we have to gain or lose? So bringing it back to digital plastic, by framing synthetic media as digital plastic, we can better understand the interplay between its materiality and meaning, providing a foundation for addressing its broader implications in education, culture, and society. So takeaways for me, I think um, language is important, right? Even the fact that we call it artificial intelligence is interesting because it's at most really good machine learning. And the term intelligence leads us to engage with it differently. Critical literacy is going to be more important than ever, especially for young people. And I think digital plastic is a really good metaphor for AI because a lot of us intuitively understand the implications of plastic in our lives. And this, I think, has some really great parallels. But like I said, if you want to read the article, it's in the description. Let me know your thoughts. And otherwise, stick around for more fun research articles with the Internet Journal Club.